Welcome to the next video in security and compliance fundamental series. And in this chapter uh, of a new module, uh, we need to describe identity governance in Azure AD. This is what we are going to describe as per our exam syllabus. So, if I need to uh, tell you what we are going to learn in this particular chapter, we are going to learn three things. We are going to learn three things. First is identity life cycle. Okay. How, when, like how it starts, it goes through different phases and what happens in the end, the life cycle of identity. The second thing we are going to learn is the access life cycle. How we manage the access, it's more like you provide some permission to the identity that becomes the access for the particular identity. We need to see the life cycle of access as well along with the identity and the third thing which is also very important which is we need to secure privileged access but i'm pretty sure if you guys are with me with my old videos you would have a pretty good idea what we are talking about here is pim yes of course pim well privileged identity management but that's what we need to learn in the third point. But here I have to mention a secure privileged access. Okay. These three things we are going to learn in this chapter. And once I'll, I'll take you through the different phases, you would easily relate it and you will easily figure it out why Azure AD has benefits uh, or Azure AD has another level of understanding and arrangement to take, take care of these life cycles, okay? Now, here, if I take you through the identity life cycle, what exactly happens when you join any organization? Well, at the beginning, do not have any access, got no access. Then what happens next? Well, you get some access, or maybe, let's put it this way, you came to the organization, you, you, you get in, and if you, if you could relate during the first initial week or few days, we do not have any credentials or identity of the particular organization to access the, maybe the, the project's credentials, access the project's assets or the company assets so what happens first then you get the your identity okay as per your role so identity assigned as per role now this is not it because you grow right you don't join and stick to that particular role anyone who joins any company joins with the wish that he could grow to the next level and the next level and then the next level so what would be the third phase the third phase would be next role and accordingly uh, accordingly identity changes for example you joined as an engineer then you become a consultant your identity was an engineer then you become the consultant so is the permissions roles those things changes right you can call it as a move maybe you move to a different department okay now <clears throat> what could be the another phase another phase could be it's it's time you are done with that particular organization that you want to leave or you want to retire right so this is in nutshell is the life cycle of identity it starts with nothing right then it 
get something, right? Then you grow, then you decide uh, either retire or you leave. So what is happening in this particular circle is because system doesn't know you, system knows the credential, system knows the identity. So identity is getting assigned, getting moved and getting removed. This is what the identity life cycle is. Now, how Azure AD relates with this life cycle of an identity that we need to understand, okay? And the best part of Azure AD is there is a feature which can integrate with cloud-based HR systems, right? Because anyone enters any organization, it enters through a gate. That gate is HR, right? And everything is first updated in the HR process or HR systems. And then it gets updated in the other systems. But what if you can integrate HR systems with Azure AD? Then whatever changes happen in the HR, it will automatically sync to the different life cycle of the identity. And that is the feature of Azure AD Premium. And this will save you a lot of trouble. What could happen, your, your uh, employee did not get the required access or identity to do his new job. He has to struggle, he has to fill a form and things like that to get those access. It might take a week or two. Right, it happens, right? It may it may happen like somebody has left the organization, but identity is still lying somewhere in the system active. Because he passed from the HR system, but nobody has changed the internal system of the organization. So the beauty is when you integrate your HR system with Azure AD it would be in sync. Who comes and who goes, it would be synced with the Azure AD Premium. And these roles are inside the different groups. If, you, if, if HR changes the group of the person when he moved to a different role, the same thing would be sync to the Azure AD, right? <clears throat> so that kind of feature we can get from the Azure AD. That's a wonderful feature by which you can integrate with the cloud systems right like like a workday or sales so in general managing the life cycle of an identity is about updating the access that users need whether through integration with hr system right here because what user cares user doesn't care how he's getting the access what he wants, he should have the access as soon as he joins the company, as soon as he moved to the different role, right? So if it is integrated, it would be taken care immediately. As soon as the HR system updated, it would be synced. Else, it would be the manual process or different other kind of processes, which is, which is kind of uh, vulnerability for the system, for the organization. Now, let's talk about the uh, access life cycle life cycle or access okay and access right okay well access life cycle is the process of managing access throughout the user's organizational life okay here we are talking about like engineers and the consultant and the retired but engineers would have access to the systems, right? And consultant maybe have the access to the different systems so that he could consult with the customers. So as for the identity access lifecycle also goes simultaneously. 
users require different level of access from the point at which they join at which they join an organization to when they leave accordingly uh, the access changes right so organization can automate the access lifecycle process through technology such as dynamic groups this is another uh, wonderful feature of uh, ad dynamic groups and how this works see if you are creating a dynamic groups you are you are utilizing a particular attribute which will gather those people who belongs to the particular attribute in particular group for example you have created a group of attribute engineer so when this uh, all the engineers will be automatically come into this particular group and all the permissions are assigned to this group and these permissions will be would be assigned to all those users who are part of these groups and as per the condition all users are engineer that's the attribute right but for dynamic groups you should have uh, a license for the azure ad this is again the feature of azure ad premium but it is a wonderful feature because everything is automated you need not to do anything you just need to apply the uh, query or condition to create a dynamic group and it will take care of the access lifecycle automatically. Right, so this is access lifecycle. Now, the third point is secure privileged access. Well, <clears throat> every organization, or if you're coming from the uh, legacy world or the on-premises, there is Azure AD and not the Azure AD, but the Windows AD, which has like domain credentials, schema credential, uh, enterprise uh, credentials. There are credentials which are privileged, credentials who has all the accesses, credentials which are not supposed to be in the hands of everyone, credentials which are secure or saved somewhere so that only entitled people can have the access right so what pim does pim provides control to secure access rights or the admin rights or the privilege rights privileged identity management can take care of a lot of things for example if you need to reset the password for example you are a help desk administrator and you need to reset the uh, password for the users. Now, we know that you only uh, maybe do those passwords. It's an example, it's not the real life situation. Let's suppose you reset all the passwords on Friday. So what, what can we do with the help of PIM? We can give you just-in-time access only on Friday for one hour where you can perform this job. Similarly, the thousands different kind of jobs which required privileged access but for a particular time limit so you can do those kind of things with azure ad premium p2 because pim needs p2 license so this is this is the uh, <clears throat> basic or or we can say this is the uh describe identity governance and azure ad that's how you maintain the governance with the help of azure ad so in the if i i have to summarize this chapter the only thing you need to keep in mind azure ad premium service provide integration with the cloud-based hr system azure ad premium provides the dynamic groups which can take care of the access life cycle and azure ad premium p2 provides privileged identity management to manage your privileged uh, identities and access. That's what you need to understand for this particular exam. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.